Alrighty, welcome back to the shop. We have a very cool project and competition for y'all today. Some other makers and myself have gotten together to host a build along. The goal of this build along is for all of us, including you, the viewers, to make the same knife based off of a free set of plans that I will add to the description of this video. In conjunction with the build along, we decided to also have a viewers challenge. This challenge will have two winners, the first overall winner and then the novice winner. The novice winner is an individual who has been making knives for less than a year or who does not have a 2x72 belt grinder or any belt grinder for that matter. Other than myself, the judges include Cole from Wingle's Workshop, Brian from B Cone Knives, and Jeff Royer along with his mastersmith son, Kyle Royer. The winners of this challenge will be awarded with some pretty cool prizes from our sponsors who include LittleMachineShop.com, Maritime Supplies, the Kyle Royer family, TR Maker, and Bex Armory. Additional competition details, including the timeline and the list of prizes, will be in the description of this video, as well as the top comment. This video will be part one of two of my build. I will be releasing the second part of the video just a week or two before the deadline for the viewers' knives, which is at the end of November. So with that, let's get on to the build. As y'all just saw in the intro, I got this knife cut out and ground to profile. Here I'm drilling in some pinholes along with some weight reduction holes. These additional weight reduction holes serve a dual purpose, which is allowing epoxy to easily move around during the glue up and form essentially epoxy pins. While I'm over at the mill, I decided to use a 3 16 of an inch end mill and add in my sharpening choil. This could also have been done with a chainsaw file, however, I like using the mill to ensure I have a square notch. On my full tang knives, I really like to add in some jimping where the thumb will land on the spine with this checkering file. Note that all the filing and drilling needs to be done before heat treatment. One of the most common questions I get in my videos is why I like to grind my bevels post heat treatment on full tang stock removal knives like this one. While it's really just personal preference, I landed on this method due to a few perceived benefits, which include maintaining full thickness while heat treating and only needing to suit up once for grinding. Maintaining the full thickness makes clamping the knife in the straightening jig easier and helps to reduce warping. If you're heat treating with a forge, maintaining the full thickness aids in even heating of the blade and prevents overheating the tip. Obviously, this is just my opinion, and if done correctly, heat treating a knife that has been ground 80% of the way there works just fine. I do this on just about all of my forge blades. In order to maximize my time, I drilled holes in my handle scales using the blade as a template before heat treating. This will allow me to work on the handle while the blade is tempering. While unnecessary with a annealed stock from the manufacturer, I did decide to run a normalizing cycle. I then brought the 1084 blade up to 1525 degrees Fahrenheit and quenched in parks 50. Like normal, I ran two two hour tempering cycles at 406 degrees Fahrenheit. With the blade tempering, I can work on shaping my handle scales. As y'all can see here, I'm holding my scales together with the quarter inch Gulso fasteners I'll be using in this build. I wanted to use removable handle scales since I plan on having an exposed tang and because I really like being able to take off my handle scales to work on them separately from the knife. I used the work rest on my Northridge 2x72 belt grinder to shape the front of my handle scales and check their symmetry with my Cheapo microscope. After my tempering cycles, I started on my blade cleanup. I like to get the profile ground to around 320 grit before starting on the flats. 
The horizontal ability of a 2x72 really helps speed up this process, and I got all the scratches headed in the right direction. To clean up the sharpening choil, I wrapped some sandpaper around a needle file to run on my drill. With the profile all cleaned up, I can now work on the flats. I use my DIY surface grinding attachment to flatten and finish both sides of the knife. The combination of my straightening plates during the quench, clamping of the blade pieces and angle iron during a temper, and this surface grinding attachment yields a nice flat blade ready for handle scales. To start the grinding process, I mark my center line with a height gauge on my surface plate. I'm fairly sure Little Machine Shop will be including a height gauge in their kit for the winners. I use this thing on every knife nowadays, so it's safe to say that I'm a fan of this tool. The first belt I started with in my progression is a VSM 36 grit belt. I worked up to a 320 grit J-Flex. With a 220 grit J-Flex belt, I really started focusing in on my plunge lines. I like to use an optivizer to eyeball these plunges during the process. Before moving on to hand sanding, I like to hit the flats with 320 grit paper on my disc grinder. Bex Armory is also a sponsor of this build along and I'm pretty sure they'll supply a Vander Sander chassis just like this one to the overall winner. I find that hitting the flats with the disc before sanding really speeds up the process and with the blade already mostly at 320 grit after the disc, I get the scratches all headed in the right direction in no time. I'll be stone washing this blade so 320 grit satin is a good place to stop but I'd encourage y'all to try around with different grits. I like 600 as well. I plan on doing most of the handle work in the second part of this build, but you can get a little preview here. The handle is going to have an exposed hang, which I think is a really cool look for an everyday carry working knife like this one. It adds a little complexity to the build, but I hope y'all agree that it's worth the effort. In the next video, I will be putting a handle on this knife and finishing it out, as well as making a leather sheath. I encourage all of you makers out there and would-be makers to go down to the description, download the free template, and start making a knife. Truly, the point of all this is just to have fun. We want to make a knife along with the community as well as push some prospective knife makers into the game. The journey of knife making can be started with a file and a hand drill. It will yield you a physical product that can be used on a daily basis as well as passed on to your offspring. It also gives you a strong sense of satisfaction and accomplishment when finishing the build of a knife. And that's pretty hard to beat. Until next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.